There is no shortage of infamous figures and places on the internet, so much so it's damn near impossible to escape. Not only are the infamous themselves in the spotlight, but there's a whole genre and industry dedicated to talking about them. From TLC series about the morbidly obese, to drama focused YouTube channels talking about the latest lol cow to grace TikTok. A good portion of these lol cows are just that, harmless laughing stocks. <laughs> However, no log cow is created equal. Some cows are more reviled and destructive than others, many of which are morally bankrupt at best and straight up criminal at worst. Some will even do anything if it means getting rid of their dirty laundry, even if it comes with a great sacrifice, not only to themselves, but to others. These fervent actions have left one man and his sight at the front of a war. A war against pocket and proper tyrants alike. It's gotten to the point where not only is the CEO of a tier 1 ISP allegedly leveraging his power against the site and those related to it, he may have no choice but to go the route of Gab and create an entirely new infrastructure in order to stay in operation on the clear net. This is the story of the recent happenings of Joshua Moon, otherwise known as Null, and his site the Kiwi Farms, and their struggle for survival. <laughs> Let's start off with some history. As where most of our major timeline altering events occur, it starts back with Christian in the original Quickie, a site entirely dedicated to the discussion of the man himself and the events revolving around him. Null started out as a part-time admin for the Quickie, while working a full-time day job. Saying dealing with the more novel and niche security problems the site had to offer was a far better path to walk than remaining at his former job. He left and focused his efforts toward the site. Even though the Quickie was dedicated to talking about Christian, there was a prevailing problem of derailment in the talk pages of the site. According to Null, much of this talk was revolving around hypotheticals and Q&As, essentially devolving into Christian fanfiction and troll AMAs. Because of this, CogsDev, the former admin of the Quickie, decided to create a containment site in order to quell this type of discussion and get the site back on track. And so, the Quickie forums was born. At first administrated by a man named Champtum, along with Null and a few others. After about two years of operation, the former administration agreed to hand the reins of the site over to Null fully on February 3rd of 2013. A little after 2014, the topics of discussion went past Chris Chan and it became a more general gossip site, cataloging and discussing the many strange happenings and many strange people throughout the internet. The name change came about, according to Null, from the mispronunciation of the Quickie Forums by a couple of different cows. The site rebranded and the name Kiwi Farms was adopted out of this mispronunciation. Null himself is a rather contentious figure, you need only listen to his podcast, Mad at the Internet, to come to that conclusion. You like him or you hate him. There's little in between, especially within the current political zeitgeist we find ourselves in. He's been the host and operator of the farms for nearly 11 years at this point. The latter end of those years have been the most tumultuous. There is plenty to disagree with Null on, but the biggest contention point of the farms is the hosting of sensitive information, or the docs of an individual. In this case, a law cow. It is often argued that the forum should not catalog this information given the context of which it could be used, and the potential consequences that can occur. Null himself even saying hosting that type of information doesn't help the case of the Kiwi farms. I mean, I'm sure the docs doesn't help. I'm not going to say that that probably, it's like, that gives people a thing to, to point at and say, look, they're posting my address, and this is to make me scared for my life, even though that's not the case. Um, it definitely doesn't help. It doesn't do any, any favors for the site. However, Null brings up a very cogent point. Someone's docs can be found rather easily through voting records, the white pages, and many other means, at least here in the US, where they are made public. A lot of people uh, point and blame at the forum for allowing this information to be republished, but it almost always comes from uh, two sources, public voting records and things like Spokio and Syncheckmate and white pages. Not only that, but many instances of a docs is posted by the docs themselves. Even though I agree with Null's statement that one's online privacy is one's responsibility, I personally subscribe to the more popular consensus that the farm shouldn't host docs, not just for how it could be used, but for the simple survival of the site. Null's response to this argument is the anger towards the site is misdirected, a sentiment I believe is very reasonable. Uh, the anger is, is, is misdirected, is what I'm saying. People get angry at the forum for allowing doxing, when it should be, why is it that every state makes voter re uh, registration information completely public, when we don't even have voter ID laws in almost any state? Like, what purpose does that even serve? And then further, why do we allow corporations to peddle our data and sell it in mass to sites like Spokio and Instant Checkmate and the White Pages? At the end of the day, Null is the owner and operator of the site, and hosting the docs of an individual, although highly frowned upon, is not illegal here in the US, 
as that information, as he said, is wanted, collected, bought, and sold by many different companies out there. He has chosen to bear this cross, along with the countless others that do the same, and will continue to do so until the very end, or at least until there is legislation written prohibiting it. However, the point of this video isn't to discuss the contentious policies and views of Null, rather it's to discuss the war front he's found himself in. The Kiwi Farms has drawn the ire of some incredibly powerful people and organizations. The implications of the actions taken by those who run the backbone of the internet are dire, and if they're allowed to have their way and black hole the farms from existence, it will set the precedence for one of the final nails in the coffin of the internet as we know it. Let's start at the beginning with the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign and its catalyst, Kefels, another contentious figure within this whole debacle. The farms has had no shortage of enemies, but she's one of the few that has had quite a sizable impact on its integrity. Even though she's largely irrelevant now, her claim to fame was primarily Twitter ratios and deplatforming campaigns, starting with Destiny, another political streamer, and not long after that, the Kiwi Farms. Not only is she at best a useful idiot, and at worst, a malicious opportunist, she is a hypocrite of the highest caliber, being guilty of the many things she has accused the Kiwi Farms of committing. Doxing, harassment, threats, lying, etc. There's so much it's daunting. Here's a bit of a taste of just how low she's willing to stoop. The whole Drop Kiwi Farms campaign coincided with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Kiwi Farms had been hosted in Ukraine for a time, and the location of the servers were found and released. Kefels quote tweeted this docs, and for all intents and purposes, wink wink and nudge nudge potential Ukrainian forces that may have been sympathetic to her to bomb this place. I think that is a good synopsis of the type of person that Kevels is. The Drop Kiwi Farms campaign unfortunately proved successful in many ways, but before we go into its aftermath and what Null has done to deal with it as a result, I want to discuss the lesser known major player in all this. Kefels may have been the one in the spotlight, but much of what she did was lying, twitter ratios, and complaining. Her crusade ended when Cloudflare revoked their DDoS protections from the Kiwi Farms, publicly at least. One person, however, is far more unhinged and far more dedicated to the complete destruction of the Kiwi Farms and anyone associated with it. Her crusade has been ongoing since 2017, far before the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign. The vectors of attack she has deployed include, but are not limited to, successful social engineering at an extraordinarily high level, using bullying tactics from positions of power in order to make smaller hosting services capitulate to her demands, and has gone as far to attempt something, if successful, would quite literally mean the tearing apart of the internet as we know it. I'm talking about ex-Google employee, and now CTO of Honeycomb.io, Liz Fong Jones. Fong Jones was hired at Google in 2008, and started out as a systems admin, and then moved to a software engineering position within site reliability. Fong Jones ceased this work, and in 2010, moved their focus toward equity engineering. The nice way of saying they spread woke scold propaganda throughout their time at the company. Much of Fong Jones' activity was negative, as you will soon find out. However, there was a rather significant positive that came out of their employment. Fong Jones had successfully got the now defunct Google Plus to change its policies on requiring real names in order to use its service. This would later have ripple effects on overarching Google policies as a whole. This was not for any sort of privacy concern. Fong Jones is no proponent for anonymity. Rather, it was for the concern of dead naming. This would mark the end for any positivity to come out of Fong Jones' employment. The next most significant event in their time at Google was revolving around the famous Google Memo debacle, where James Damore, a former Google engineer, had criticized Google's predominant left-wing ideological echo chamber. It's important to note that Damore never shared this memo outside of Google. He wrote this as a response when the diversity program he had attended had asked for feedback. It is speculated that Fong Jones is likely the one who leaked the memo to the press. The memo would eventually lead to Demore's termination of employment in a fairly large smear campaign. Later in 2018, Demore would directly name Fong Jones in his class action lawsuit against the company. The only other major note of Fong Jones' time there was organizing the Google Walkout, which protested Google's partnership in the US's Project Maven an initiative that aims to speed up the integration of AI used in all of America's branches of military, and Google's mishandling of an alleged sexual assault case involving Andy Rubin, the creator of Android. Fong Jones later resigned in January 2019. Shortly after submitting their resignation, Fong Jones said they would reconsider if they put an unnamed employee on their corporate board, worded as a last-ditch effort to reform Google, but more than likely someone's position Fong Jones could leverage power from. Proving themselves to be a great thorn in the side of Google executives, they paid them out $100,000 to leave early, much to the delight of other Google employees posting on Blind, Google's anonymous discussion app. 
Bong Jones now resides as CTO of Honeycomb.io, a company specializing in observability and application performance management, a company with deep pockets and is also well connected. Now that the clean wiki side of Fong Jones is out of the way, let's move on to the lesser known aspects of their character, along with their past and present escapades. Should you choose to browse their Kiwi Farms thread, the first thing you'll come across is that Fong Jones is a self-admitted rapist. However, they choose to word it as a consent accident. After this rather damning statement, Fong Jones will try to backpedal and minimize the severity of this crime, even trying to garner sympathy in saying the victim's feelings of trauma and suicide or causing the same within them. A bit of a cherry on top for this whole situation is Fong Jones also tries to push the blame onto the victim's phobia of dogs. Not only is Fong Jones a self-admitted racist, but they also allegedly protected other racists. According to this archive post on Hacker News, an ex-Google employee recounts the time that they had been sexually assaulted by a former coworker and friend. This friend not only tried to force themselves onto a former employee, but also offered to show them their uncle's stash of CP this employee stating that they already suspected them of being a child predator. After this ordeal, the poster went to Fong Jones for advice. However, instead of receiving sympathy, Fong Jones blamed the OP, calling the ex-employee a monster for not reacting positively enough by letting a trans person explore their sexuality. Extraordinarily condemning, however, it is worth noting this post was made from a burner account. But given what Fong Jones themselves has admitted to, this allegation isn't outside the realm of possibility. If being an admitted rape and alleged protector of rapists wasn't bad enough, Fong Jones is also a major hypocrite and more than willing to abuse any position of power they find themselves in. Much of what they've accused the Kiwi Farms of doing, they are directly guilty of. In Fong Jones's own Wikipedia article, they had decried the harassment and doxing received after Vox Populi and Breitbart reported on a conversation from those within Google+, criticizing the memo and subsequently blaming Fong Jones and others for Demore's termination. They are more than willing to ruin the livelihoods of, as they put it, unevolved individuals. Here's Fong Jones going after the wife of the CEO of Fiberhub during the height of the Drop Kiwi Farms debacle, one of the services Kiwi Farms had utilized. Now that you have a taste of who Liz Fong Jones is, let's go into the history with Kiwi Farms, starting with Trans Lifeline. To keep it brief, the Lifeline, for all intents and purposes, was a scam designed to embezzle money from a nonprofit for the benefit of its creators. Greta Gustava Martella and their partner Nina Schobel. The line was found to have a 19% pickup rate, not be accredited by the American Association of Suicidology, and subsequently did not call emergency services in the event of a suicide in progress. The people whom picked up when someone was able to get in contact were often hastily and seemingly improperly trained, uninterested, and at worst, berated the callers. The creators were found to have stolen over $350,000 from the lifeline. Not only was Liz Hong Jones a friend of the creators, they donated $50,000 to the nonprofit. During this whole ordeal, the Kiwi Farms did what it does best and documented the events taking place, even going as far to test the Lifeline's pickup rates. This drew the ire of Greta and ended in them showing up at Nell's then place of residence as an act of intimidation. Needless to say, it didn't do much. Nell posted his perspective on the farms and Greta their perspective on Facebook. After this incident is where Liz Fong Jones comes in. Presumably, according to Null, Greta got Fong Jones to begin their now over half a decade long crusade against the farms. The first real instance of attack became known when Null created a thread regarding the situation, titled Liz Fong Jones, harassing people for my email. According to the post, Fong Jones had sent a complaint email to Kiwi Farm's email host, thinking it was the site's primary hosting service. They did this through an at google.com associated email. In other words, Fong Jones used their work email. Mind you, Within the tech world, the Google name carries with it a lot of weight. Weight that scares people, especially smaller tech businesses. Using this sort of power for personal gain goes against Google's conflict of interest policies. Something Fong Jones knows, but went against anyway. Null finished off the post by showcasing the email that they wrote, accusing the farms of blackmailing along with AUP and TOS violations. The next instance would come after Null made a comment recognizing Fong Jones in a class action lawsuit James Damore had brought against Google where they were directly named for discrimination. Two weeks after that post, Null would create another thread dubbed Dropping Google, where he explains he is ceasing use of Google Analytics, which utilized the user's Google account session to track Kiwi Farms activity, saying he wasn't comfortable letting Google have access to Kiwi Farms user data after the actions taken by Liz Fung Jones. Not long after the passing mention, 
Wired had written an article called The Dirty War Over Diversity Inside Google, where it directly reported on Liz Fung Jones' supposed harassment and even named Kiwi Farms directly, citing a New York Times article decrying the site as the web's biggest group of internet stalkers. There was some respite for a while after Null directly told Fong Jones to cease all communication, but unfortunately things would only escalate from here, manifesting into Fong Jones' crusade joining the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign. Drop Kiwi Farms was effectively a deplatforming and smear campaign against the site, captained by the aforementioned professional Twitter ratioer and member of the Canadian Communist Party, Heffels. Unfortunately, what this campaign set out to accomplish was in many regards successful. Its primary goal was to get Cloudflare to cease providing its services for the farms. This being a stroke of luck for Fong Jones, took it as a sign to dial up their efforts to 11, and continued to do so more than a year later. At first, Cloudflare did not capitulate to these demands, but somewhere along the way, someone convinced them to drop Kiwi Farms. Matthew Prince, the CEO of Cloudflare, citing an imminent threat to human life. This excuse was easily seen through, as, according to Null, he received no notification from Prince himself, nor any sort of law enforcement investigating this supposed threat to human life. Cloudflare said that we had a threat to human life that was visible on the site. Never, I, he did not tell me uh, mm -hmm. personally, and he did not report it to law enforcement because I received no contact from law enforcement about any post related to an imminent threat to human life that he said would be actionable by the police. So I know it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, this, I mean, this is unprecedented. I've never heard of, an, of a U.S. legal website being pulled apart like this. What Null and others suspect their excuse stemmed from were a couple of instances of what could be considered threats. One post made in the Keffels thread, and was later deleted by the user, the reason cited was a bad joke. So the, the imminent threat referred to was on Kiwi Farms, there were two threats that were posted and then taken down within the course of, I think, 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, and those are the things that are being referred to by um, by Cloudflare, I believe, when they did the drop and other things. Well, they don't refer to them specifically. They just said imminent threats. Um, the uh, one question I had before we get into those, did, did you end up removing both of those or were those no. taken down or deleted by? OK, gotcha. Okay. To clarify, the mm -hmm. post that um, was actually on the site was mm -hmm. deleted by the user and yeah. the, you know you can explain why you delete a post when you do and the user chose to provide a message that was along the lines of bad joke sorry mm -hmm. so there, that that was deleted by the simply be, and the user deleted it because using the you know as you described it reddit karma system people chose to give it negative ratings the other prominent post was made off-site entirely on 4chan's poll and shouted out the farms even though the evidence for these accusations were shaky at best cloudflare still made their decision to drop kiwi farms an interesting side note in all this is that Liz Fong Jones has been at Cloudflare's throat for more than just their hosting of the farms, and far before the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign coincided with their crusade, they seem to have a vested interest in the fall of Cloudflare in general. In Fong Jones' thread, it points out that they were in a relationship with Alexandria Christina Leal, an employee at Fastly, a direct competitor to Cloudflare. Given their track record with conflict of interests, it's reasonable to conclude that Fong Jones' crusade doubles as a means to benefit their partner. Unfortunately, the damage done was far more extensive than the revocation of DDoS protections. According to Null, not only was the site dropped by Cloudflare, he lost his Google Voice number, a telephone service provided by Google that provides US-based phone numbers to its customers. He lost his Wyoming-based registered agent, an entity responsible for receiving legal documents and other important notifications on behalf of the business they represent, his Florida-based mailing address, and much, much more. If that weren't enough, again, according to Null, Tier 1 ISPs were not only refusing to provide service to the Kiwi Farms, some were actively blocking their own customers from accessing the site. And then major Tier 1 IS, uh, ISPs like Arleon, Lumen, and by extension CenturyLink and Quest were blocking their own customers for connecting to the site. Um, and this was not because of... Wait, 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 wait. Can I just ask on that last one? Mm -hmm. ISPs were blocking by customers from accessing the website? Yes. If you were a customer of CenturyLink or Quest, you were blocked no matter what uh, possible routes existed, they would actually prohibit their own customers from accessing the Kiwi Farms or any website that I hosted on my IPs. Mind you, the Kiwi Farms is a US legal site. This is all happening because of a mixture of harassment, intimidation, and complaint volume. All of that, however, pales in comparison to the greatest length Liz Fong Jones has gone to try and erase the site from existence. Barring the harassment of ISPs, data centers, the people who run them, and those tangentially related to those services, According to Null, Fong Jones has attempted to get the Kiwi Farms IP resource allocations revoked, specifically from APNIC. Before you can grasp the gravity of such an attempt, you first need to understand what an IP address is. To keep it brief, 
An IP address is an identifying number assigned to every device connected to the internet and is used in network interface identification and location addressing, a way for computers to communicate over a network, aka the internet. The Internet Assigned Numbers Authority is responsible for the allocation of IP addresses all throughout the world. There are specifically five entities that control different parts of the globe. Starting with ARIN, they load over IP allocation in the US and Canada and some parts of the Caribbean. LACNIC, the presiders over Latin America. AFRINIC, they control the entire African continent. RIPNIC, they command all of Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia. And finally, we have APNIC. They reign over the Asian Pacific, including Australia and China. They are our main focus. The Kiwi Farms is provided its IP resource allocations from APNIC. There has been no case anywhere, ever, on the internet where a site has had its internet protocol resource allocations revoked because of complaint volume. If Fong Jones had been successful in getting APNIC to capitulate to their demands, the precedent set will lead to the quite literal fracturing of the internet. Think of North Korea's intranet, Kwang Myong, or China's Great Firewall, and make that the global standard. No longer will we enjoy the luxury of the web of trust that makes up the backbone of the internet. No longer will there be a World Wide Web. Think of Netflix or Hulu only having access to certain shows and movies, and apply that to internet service providers only having access to certain websites. A country wide web. A state wide web. A region wide web. That is the future you have to look forward to if Liz Fong Jones and people like them are successful in their crusade. They are willing to fundamentally change the internet for the worse if it means they can shove their skeletons back into the closet. Fortunately, Liz Fong Jones wasn't successful in their tirade against the farms, at least in that regard, but much of the damage caused by both them and Keffels still lingers. However, Null was able to recover a significant amount he had lost in the past year. The site can also still be reached on the clearnet as well, although semi-frequent domain changes are common. Null has even created his own DDoS protection, KiwiFlare, but the most reliable way of access is through the Tor network. But at the time of recording, the brief respite was just that, as Null has had to endure a new wave of attacks on the Kiwi farms, this time not only involving a tier 1 ISP, but allegedly involving its CEO directly. All this coming from Null's Twitter, at xjosh. Starting with his first post, the Kiwi farms had been targeted by the largest DDoS attack he had ever seen, going as far to not only disrupt the KiwiFarms.st domain, but going after the root.st authority, disrupting all .st domains. Two days later, he posted a screen cap from his telegram assessing the situation. Going up against paid complainers, another wave of DDoS attacks, this time with attempted extortion, and most concerningly, Cogent's involvement. Null routing any IPs that serve the Kiwi farms, and using their size, status, and pull to intimidate smaller ISPs that decide to serve the site as well. Liz Fong Jones is still engaged, as always using their CTO status at Honeycomb to continue to complain and intimidate anyone associated with the farms. Another rather dubious tactic Fong Jones has deployed is using a frivolous defamation lawsuit, one in Australia, and is using the case under false pretenses in order to attempt to further black hole the Kiwi farms. Unfortunately, the efforts made against Null and the farms reaches even deeper down to methods of payment. To give you a taste, not only is Null and the Kiwi farmers barred from any and all major payment processing services, Coinbase won't allow you to send any crypto to any wallet address associated with the site. Null's counter to all of this is malicious compliance. Fight complaint volume with complaint volume. Cogent, apparently, will enforce their AUP both within and outside of their networks, blackholing any and all sites that are shown to violate their terms of service. How successful this will be, time will only tell. To say the opposition the Kiwi Farms faces is immense would be an understatement. One might ask, why the Kiwi Farms? Why is the site facing this level of attack and censorship? When there are far more horrific sites out there, not only do the hosts know about them, they actively service them and protect them. Well, it's simple. Personal reputation. Um, I've discovered in hosting the forum that m money is not the strongest form of capital. It's, it's personal reputation. Uh Cataloging the dirty laundry of the many individuals all throughout the internet and having it located in a relatively convenient spot and available for the public to see can be quite damaging especially if you hold a position of high status. No amount of money can fix the perception of your peers. Liz Fung Jones is not the only example, but one of the best. You don't want your esteemed equity engineer resume and CTO status being next to the evidence of your clear abuse of power, your dubious connections, and your admission to Even though the opposition is great and the efforts immense, there is still hope for the farms. As said, the site is still up and hopping around on the clearnet, 
and the version residing within the Tor networks remains untouched and is, for now, the best route of access. Not only that, but Nell himself has since been unbanned on X, and streams fairly regularly on most big streaming platforms through his show, Mad at the Internet. Perhaps the best news out of all this is Nell's plan for the future. No details have been divulged at the time of this video, but according to him, after the tumultuous week of attacks, he has a solid plan moving forward, and it's just a matter of time before everything is squared away. But until then, the Kiwi Farms, just like its real counterpart, will continue on in its struggle for survival. He needs to get help. Lisa and Messi gotta got me bad. And internet log house want me dead. Appalachian Jews gave me a curse. How could things get any worse? I'm a feeder, a sneeder, a bit to a cedar, failed gardener, a parader, and a log cow bomber. I've worked up, up, I've upset. Oh, I'm mad at the internet.